Today we're going to use GIMP to create transparent GIFs. Now, GIFs are special graphic images that contain only 256 colors, but one of those colors could be transparent, so you can see the background color behind it. A great useful uh, use for the transparent GIFs would be something like a menu system. So, for instance, we had a few different pages that contained rollovers, and we want to create a little menu that will allow us to switch from, from one to the other. Now, the first thing we're going to do is create an image. I don't really know how big I want it, so I'm going to create it 300 pixels by 300 pixels, and then we'll go from there and figure out what size it's really supposed to be. So I got a nice background of, of white in this case here. At the moment, my foreground is black. And I'm going to draw myself a an ellipse. You can see the, eye, the second column, first row in the tool options. And in drawing the rectangle, I, I end up with the ellipse image. And from there, I go to the Edit menu, and I choose Stroke Selection. Now what happens there is whatever my foreground color is, that in this case is black, it's going to create a solid line, and it says by default it's going to be 6 pixels in width, that line. I could change that, but I won't. And there you see that solid black line. Now at that point I'm going to choose the Crop Tool, which I've highlighted here in red, and I've drawn a rectangle around the image that I need. So it's not going to be 300 by 300 anymore. It's going to be whatever the width of that ellipse is. And you notice it says on the bottom, click or press enter to crop. And that's what I'll do. And then I have myself a much smaller image. I haven't looked at the image size yet, but we'll check that out later. Now, the first thing I'm going to do with that, I'm going to save that because I want to make sure I have a template to work off of. So I'm going to call this a template for transparent GIF. And you notice the file extension happens to be XCF. That is the default um, file extension for GIMP related images which allows layering and so on to be saved as part of the file. Well, once I've got that, I'm going to go to the layer menu and under transparency I'm going to add an alpha channel. If I don't do that, it won't be able to do transparencies. And from there, I'll take the magic pointer which is on the fourth column of the first row and I'm going to click that magic wand on some white space that is outside the black space. And then I'm going to go to the edit menu and choose clear, or I could just hit the delete key on the keyboard. And you'll notice anything outside the black line is now transparent, though anything inside the black line is still white. Now from there, I'm going to go and choose the uh, letters by clicking on the A. And whatever my foreground color is, that's what it's going to be. And you'll notice I have a font that happens to be called Sans and a font size of 18. Now that's not really going to work for me. I'm going to need to change that. So I'll go in and change. I think I'm going to take something like Com Comic Sans MS or Comic Sans MS Bold, something like that. And I'm going to also change the font size to much bigger. At that point, I'm going to choose the Move button, which is the four-headed arrow. And you'll notice down on the bottom it says Tool Toggle. And it was initially set on Pick a Layer or Guide, but I switched it to Move the Active Layer because I want to get that word Tulum centered. Tulum, by the way, is the, the name of the Mayan ruins that are in one of the rollovers. That's why I've called it Tulum. may not make sense to anybody else. So once I've got that centered, then I go to the Layer menu, and you'll notice... Way up on top, it says there are two layers. Those two layers are the background and the text, which is Tulum. And I'm going to merge them into one layer. Now, from there, I'm going to take this file and I'm going to export it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it TulumWhite.gif. The reason white is because of the white background uh, behind the word Tulum. And uh, .gif, and it's going to know then to save it as a, a GIF format. And, in fact, you can even add some text. In this case, it by default says created with GIMP. You can put whatever you wanted in the text there. I don't typically change that. And I save that. At that point, I'll go ahead and I'll click the white in the middle around the word Tulum. And then I'll hit the clear button off the edit menu and delete all that. So now it's going to be transparent except for the word Tulum and the oval-shaped black border. 
I'm going to exit that and I'm going to call that tulumtrans.gif. And I'm going to export and it's all saved. And then you know what? I'm going to change my mind. I don't really like a foreground color of uh, black. I don't mind that for the text, but instead of having white and transparent, especially since some people don't know how to do backgrounds and they may end up with a white background for whatever reason, I'm going to change my foreground color to red. And I'm going to then, using the, the fill bucket, I'm going to fill that whole transparent with something red. And you know how the fill works. It just up <clears throat> every, every pixel it can hit until it reaches the border, it does. Now, that being said, I've got to save that file as tulumred.gif. When I'm all done with that, I just want to point out that I can go back to my template for transparent gifs.xcf. And that's the original. And I'm going to go, because got I've got now a red and a transparent for Tulum, but I need it for a couple of others. Because as you see here, I've got a couple of school photos, and I've got a couple of photos from vineyard uh, uh, fishing. So I'm going to take those, and I'm going to create rollovers for those as well. Well, of course, I've got the, the, in the rollovers folder, I have some HTML pages, and I've already got the images, as you just saw. And so I go, and I'm going to take all six of those that I now have created, and I'm going to put them in the, happens to be the images edits folder is where I've got them in the public HTML. And let me go to tulum.html, and all it really is in the case of, of Tulum is an image with a rollover on it and a little short sentence about Tulum down at the bottom. But I'm going to take a look at one of them. I happen to grab the fish one. And let's look at the dimensions of that. It turns out it's 232 by 120. Hmm. I had started with 300 by 300. Now I'm 232 by 120. That means I need, oh, at least two portions, about 700, more than 700 by more than 120 in order to make this work, to have three of them in a row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build an iframe. Source equals menu.html. Width equals 750, I'll say. Height equals 150. And that iframe, that's where this menu is going to go. The menu is going to contain three rollover GIFs that will then, when you click on them, I want to load the page. Well, think about that. If I'm in Tulum, then menu.html is, is a frame beneath that, beneath Tulum. So that means when I click on something in the menu, it's going to need to replace the one above it, or in other words, the top. Could be parent, but let's just go with top for now. I'll explain that as we go along here. So I'm going to do the same thing with Vineyard Fishing. I'm going to create a menu.html, uh, an iframe that, that holds menu.html. And I'll do the same thing with school. I got another iframe, same thing, menu, same width and height. And now I've got to go in and create a menu. So I just take my standard template that I've used before in other, in other files, and I put it in an image. That source begins images, well, dot, dot, slash images. That means go up a folder, go into images, go into edits, and look for tulumtrans.gif. That's going to be the first one. But when I mouse over, that's what I want, tulumred.gif. And when I mouse out, I want to go back to tulumtrans.gif. So that's what that image is. That's a rollover, switching between the, the transparent and the red tulum file graphic. Now, on either side of that, I'm going to put an anchor. So I put the A in front of image and the slash A after image. So instead of having a hypertext in this anchor, I'm going to have a rollover. Now, the href is going to be tulum.html because, of course, when you click on it, you want to go to that Tulum page. That's exactly its purpose. And as I said moments ago, target equals top because I want to replace whatever page I'm on. I don't even care what page I'm on. If you click on that Tulum graphic, that means you want to load the tulum.html. And of course, when I load Tulum, what will happen? 
an iframe containing menu. I'll do the same thing with vineyard fishing, and then I'll do the same thing with school. So that all three of them, no matter which one you click, it will replace the current top page with whatever page you ask for, vineyardfishing.html, school.html, or tulum.html. And each of those, of course, will have an iframe that loads the menu. So the menu will appear in all three of them. While I'm at it, I'm just going to center that. I don't have to do that, but I think it looks a little nicer if I center it within there. And when I double click on something like Tulum, um, in my default settings, it opens up an Internet Explorer. I don't know why. But when I do that, Internet Explorer doesn't really know much about <laughs> viruses and, and problems and, and with, with computers. So what they do is they say, hey, you're doing something funky here, a little JavaScript. So do we really want to open up the ActiveX controls and allow this block content? Because we don't know what it is. So, obviously, you have to allow the block content in order for that to work if that happens. But if I'm, if I'm on Tulum and I roll over the fish, you'll, you'll notice that the others are transparent. So, whatever color, I've got a nice blue shade for a background. But they're all transparent except for when I've highlighted over fish, then we can see what, what that means. And when I click on fish, of course, then I get to the fishing page. And if I highlight over school, I then get to the school page. Now, school is kind of interesting. I did this on purpose. The 1912 school <clears throat> is a nice rectangle, but the, the 2000 school is a little bit different shape. And that causes a little bit of problems when you do that. Because the classroom, it fits in the same spot, but because the second photo, the newer one, is not the same dimensions, it causes serious problems. Think about this. When you roll over on the top part, when you roll over on the top part, it will replace the images. But if you roll over on the bottom, it replaces the 1900s image with the 2000s image. But then, if you're on the bottom, you've already moused out of the smaller image. So then it reloads the 1900s picture. But then, once you've uh, moused over, it reloads the 2000s picture because you've moused over. But once the 2000 picture is loaded, you're now moused out because of your position of the cursor. So that can cause a little problem with a page like that if your images aren't the same dimension.